Automakers, it seems, have figured out a new way to reach potential electric vehicle buyers, grew through their utility company. Pacific Gas and Electric Company announced this week that its customers can receive $3,000 off a new 2018 Nissan Leaf, a special offer that will end July 2. The discount, which comes out of the automaker's profit and does not involve a rebate from PG&E, will be applied at the time of sale. Nissan has already introduced a similar offer to customers of the Salt River Project utility in Arizona as well as several electric companies in Hawaii. The idea is not unique. BMW currently offers PG&E customers a $10,000 discount on its i3 electric car, a deal that expires at the end of May. The special offers from both Nissan and BMW come in addition to California's $2,500 rebate for buying an electric car as well as the federal government's $7,500 EV tax credit. California represents by far the largest market for electric vehicles in the United States, and PG&E is the state's biggest utility. So the concept of targeting PG&E customers for special EV deals makes sense. The LEAF has become the world's best-selling electric car since it hit the market in late 2010. But its sales tanked last fall as potential buyers waited for the 2018 model, the car's first redesign, to reach dealerships. The updated LEAF can drive 151 miles on a fully charged battery pack, 40% farther than the previous model, and starts at $29,990 before incentives. The LEAF was the fourth most popular electric car in California last year, with 4,414 new LEAFs registered. The Chevrolet Bolt led the field, with 13,487 registered in California during 2017, followed by the Tesla Model S, the Tesla Model X and the electric Fiat 500. The redesigned 2019 Subaru Forester rides on a larger, and more useful platform, one that adds room for both for passengers and cargo. It should help further cement the vehicle as the mid-size SUV linchpin of the automaker's family-friendly lineup. How much extra space are we talking about here? Subaru has stretched the Forester's wheelbase by 1.2 inches bringing the total to 105.1 inches, which allowed the vehicle's designers to add 1.4 inches of extra legroom for rear passengers. Dimensionally, the Forester also boasts small but useful improvements in every other important stretch-out measure too. The bigger 2019 Forester also includes almost two additional cubic feet of cargo space with 76.1 cubic feet now available with the rear row folded flat. It's easier to fit larger items inside the vehicle at load time too, due to nearly half a foot of additional width at the hatch opening. This will appeal to the outdoorsy folks who flock to Subaru showrooms with their kayaks and mountain bikes in tow to make sure the SUV can swallow their hobbies prior to purchase. It should come as no real surprise that the completely redesigned Forester has been blown up and puffed out. Live long enough, and it's your fate to see seemingly every automobile succumb to the desires of product planners eager to claim class above capability in any number of areas. Still, it's important to remember two things, the Forester still retains its urban-friendly proportions with this redesign, and there's now a hard cap on how big Subaru's big seller can get, what with the recently introduced three-row ascent holding its own at the top of the lineup. The latter means that this is likely to be the largest version of the Forester we'll get for quite some time. For as much as the 2019 Subaru Forester has added for the upcoming model year, there's also been a subtraction when it comes to the its past sporty character. A quick scan of the order sheet reveals that the Forester XT, which featured a 250 horsepower, turbocharged four-cylinder engine shared with the rally racing Subaru WRX, has been cut from the roster. In its place is the new Subaru Forester Sport, 
a version of the SUV that mixes mild performance enhancements with a dash of special styling sauce. The Sport shares the same engine as the base Forester, a 2.5-liter four-cylinder that has been updated to produce 182 horsepower and 176 pounds FT of torque. It also comes with a standard continuously variable transmission CVT, just like every other Forester for 2019 now that the six-speed manual has been discontinued. They all feature SI Drive, Subaru's drive the train management system that allows you to specify quicker throttle response and more aggressive transmission shifting from the CVT when switched from intelligent to sport driving mode. The new Forester Sport offers a unique sport sharp mode and also gains paddle shifters that allow you to access seven virtual gears programmed into the CVT, a feature shared with the Forester Touring trim. Sport trim also features blacked out 18-inch rims with a grill to match, as well as orange highlights inside and out and a rear spoiler on roof. Common to all Foresters, of course, is standard all-wheel drive and 8.7 inches of ground clearance, a respectable number that is similar to what you'd get with most Jeep SUVs. Most Foresters add the X-Mode feature to their AWD system, and it is designed to maximize traction to tackle slippery terrain and near off-road driving, in conjunction with a hill descent control feature. It's also worth noting that, despite the extra grunt on offered from the revised four-cylinder engine, Subaru is promising 33 mpg during highway driving, which is a single mile per gallon better than last year. Much of the rest of what the 2019 Subaru Forester delivers will be familiar to fans of the brand's focus on simple and useful designs married with day-to-day -day practicality. Automatic climate control is now included on all models, and banished along with the manual stick shift is the vehicle's parking brake handle, which has been replaced by a single-button electronic unit in a bid to carve out even more storage space from the center console. On the safety front, and part of the reason why Subaru has gone to an all-CVT lineup for the 2019 Forester, the automaker is now installing the EyeSight suite of driving aids from the base trim on up. EyeSight consists of a set of cameras mounted at the top of the windshield, and they power the SUV's adaptive cruise control, automatic braking, lane keeping assistance and lane departure warning and even an alert that reminds you to put your phone down and hit the gas if the vehicle ahead of you leaves you behind at the light. You can also add a similar auto brake option for when the Forester is traveling in reverse, as well as a blind spot monitoring system. It's wise for Subaru to avoid making wholesale changes to the 2019 Forester, as the vehicle has a loyal fan base that consistently re-ups when it's time to replace its current SUV. Even the styling of the new Forester is strongly reminiscent of the model it replaces, with LED headlights and a more windswept front end standing out as the most obvious updates. Although an effort has been made with the Touring model to introduce some of the luxury that has been largely lacking from past efforts, including updated heated seats front and rear, a heated steering wheel, and nicer interior materials, the Forester remains a vehicle that customers buy again and again because it fits seamlessly into their lifestyle, and not because it's tapping on the premium segment store. The Nissan LEAF is is the best-selling electric car in the world. If you're talking about mainstream electric vehicles, the LEAF has been it for years. Now there's an all-new version of the LEAF with more sophisticated styling and more range than before. And its $30,000 price tag still undercuts the competition from Tesla and General Motors, although those cars still go farther on a charge. The biggest advantage of the LEAF is that you won't have to wait until some time next year to get one. Just saying. The LEAF isn't particularly fun to drive, the way most EVs are. The LEAF is the mild sauce version of an electric vehicle. Part of that is because it has less power. With electric cars, 
Bigger batteries mean more driving range, but they also mean more power and ungear acceleration. So it might be no surprise the Leaf feels less exciting. To be honest, most Nissan cars are pretty dull these days. I'm not sure why but over the past few years, Nissan has decided to put all the excitement into its car's exterior design, they look pretty sharp. The engineers seem to focus purely on fuel economy and comfort, and in that respect the Leaf fits right in. The suspension is tuned for comfort and the steering feels as sharp as a Play-Doh knife. If you don't mind that, and lots of people won't, you won't mind the Leaf. Its 151 miles of range isn't as much as more expensive EVs, but I was able to comfortably get through an entire weekend of ordinary errand running, plus a round-trip commute to work, without recharging. The Leaf's interior design is also less exciting than the Model 3s or even the Bolt EVs. Beyond a shiny puck-shaped gear selector, most of the it feels like it could be in any Nissan economy car. There is a nice and fairly large touch screen, but there's nothing that makes you feel like you just leaped into the future. The Leaf does have the Pro Pilot Assist feature, which is available as an option on the Leaf and some other Nissan models. Think of it as Tesla's autopilot on a budget. It's also largely similar to driver assistance systems from Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Audi, Lexus and others. The driver has to keep hands on the steering wheel, but ProPilot will do the work of keeping the car in the center of its lane. It won't change lanes for you like systems on some more expensive cars will. It also maintains a distance behind traffic ahead. By itself, it's not revolutionary, more expensive systems are smoother and feel more natural, but what's impressive is to find it on such an affordable vehicle. The Leaf is roomy for its size comfortable, practical and a good value at its price, particularly when tax benefits are factored in is it exciting? No. But it provides a view to the future when people will buy electric cars just because they make sense not because they're cool.